why don't we just sort of start by kind of introducing yourself and uh, where, where, where do you come from? What do you do? All right. Well, I, as you mentioned, I am the CTO at a company called United Health Group. United Health Group has a couple organizations within it. The, the brand most folks would be familiar with is United Healthcare, which is our benefits business, um, serving on the order of 50 million people in the, in the uh, country. And then the other brand is called Optum, and Optum is a services business focused on the healthcare industry, covering providers, payers, government, employers, the, every facet of the industry. And technically, I am uh, housed within Optum as part of the organization, but I'm responsible for the enterprise infrastructure, everything from hosting to data centers to um, cell phones to landlines to call centers and anything else that can possibly go wrong, as well um, as being responsible for information risk management, um, quality, and another a number of other areas for IT. So I won't ask thee what keeps you up at night, because it. Uh... That it's, could be the session unto itself. It's patently <laughs> obvious, but yes. Um, so, you know, we've spent a lot of time today talking collectively as a group about enterprise mobility. And so uh, UHG, you know, very large, probably, mm -hmm. you know, a brand everybody recognizes. Can you talk a little bit about what mobility m means and has meant within your organization? Absolutely. Um, first of all, I'd say that Years ago, you talked about mobility as a strategy, and now it really doesn't make sense without particular context around it. And if you're not talking about the constituency that's engaging in some kind of mobile experience, you really have a, a fairly meaningless conversation at this point because they're so varied. So for us, it's a variety of different things, and I'll kind of put it into to certain buckets around certain groups. Um, we have a lot of folks in our organization that are knowledge workers of some site, whether they be on-site clinicians, whether they be folks who are uh, doing analytic work, whether they be consultants, or whether they be IT professionals. We have that whole group of knowledge workers, and for them, a mobility strategy is first and foremost securely allowing them to extend their work style to wherever they are at a particular point in time. Um, whether that be on an airplane, whether that be, uh, excuse me, in a senior's home providing services, or whether that be at home working on a particular piece of software. It's to be able to extend that experience. We also have a large constituent among our 150,000 employees of people that are doing um, heads down work, that are doing um, claim processing, that are taking calls a day, the real heroes at the heart and soul of how we serve our customers. And for those folks, the, the mobility strategy isn't so much about work, it's about creating a way that they can manage their personal lives um, and take care of that work outside of the normal company network. So we actually have a way to provide a mobile network for them that they can connect to, to their, own, at, at, or their own device to allow them access to resources that for a variety of security and, and other reasons we don't allow within the company network. And then there's a whole third area, which is how we work to our external constituents, where we have uh, mobile um, apps like Health for Me, which is essentially our mobile app for folks who get insurance from us, as well as Optimize Me, which is a mobile app designed to help people activate toward a healthier lifestyle. So those different constituencies, you really need to divide them um, within their particular needs and talk about mobility within the context of the particular user. We, we spent some time talking about that this morning as well, that the, the definition of mobility has you know, evolved over time, where mm -hmm. we used to be talking about email and what kind of device, as opposed to now all of these various different applications right. and strategies and services. Well, one of the things, and you did absolutely say the word device, but, but you know, what, what role does, does the device itself play in your overall strategy at this point? So we've gone from, um, in our time, we've probably done every strategy there is from being oriented toward company-provided devices to having provided a lot of Blackberries for folks, um, having provided other devices for folks, and to now really pushing toward a user picks the device, and by and large, the user owns a device. Um, in our particular, outside of a, of a mainstream PC or laptop, um, we are really looking to maximize the freedom that the users have to pick, in most cases, to pick, pick the device they want. In some cases where we're creating custom software that's being used in order for them to do their jobs, we'll pick the device for them. But when we, when we take a look at what we want, we want to be as device agnostic as possible. We want to be as technology agnostic as possible. 
I'm sure some of the folks here have gone through, anybody go through that wonderful experience of having a corporate selected cell network everybody was supposed to use? Does anybody still do that? If so, I'm really sorry for you because <laughs> I couldn't imagine a worse life than getting angry phone calls because that person didn't like that network. Well, it's pretty similar in the device world. You really need to, we really think you need to be able to support any mainstream device and you need to be able to support that um, efficiently. You need to be able to support that securely, you know, first and foremost about anything else. And you need to be able to support it um, with strong manageabil manageability tools, easy distribution, not overwhelm your help desk every time there's a change, but recognize that that freedom of choice for the user, at least within the context of our environment, I know some companies have taken other direction, but that freedom, if, you're, if people are going to pay for their own device, they're going to choose it. That's just a fact of life. And you can't turn big parts of it off if they paid for it. <laughs> no, and, and I think you also, um, again, we've gone through various, and we actually came up with a, 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 five, differentiated, a five differentiated point model on this. Um, you also really don't want to own the device. You don't want to take over the device. You don't want to make it into a... Um, company managed personally owned device I'm just I'm not I don't like that model at all um, for a whole set of reasons associated with not legal liability so much but sort of the moral liability that you have um, once you've put your fingers that far into someone's personal use of something they own that's true um, so I, I sort of warned you I might do this but mm -hmm. but I want to kind of go back to the conversation that we had in February so you you had been a good customer for a while um, and we had, uh, uh, I got a phone call, we were actually at an offsite with my team, and I got a call that said, Mike Connolly wants to talk to you, and so, you know, it's either great news or worrisome news when one of your large customers calls you. And, uh, and you shared with me, and actually I'm just very transparent, you said, Christy, uh, we love your stuff, but uh, we've actually spent the last 30 days uh, looking to see whether there was a, a prettier girl at the dance. That's a, that wasn't his words, that was my words. I'm glad you used that not metaphor, that not me. Not that I felt rejected, but... So, <laughs> there's anybody from Human Resources, I did not use that <laughs> metaphor. That's why we don't let press come to this session. Um, but, you know, had gotten to the point and, and really wanted to talk about sort of what you found and, and, and clearly, you know, you. you you sort of remained committed right. to good and re doubled down on good and ended up with good back at the finish line. But what I really wanted to talk about was kind of what were the criteria? You know, what, what did you value? Because ha having just come out of such a broad valuation, and I, by the way, you know, I think we all sort of welcome the feedback. What matters in your mind as you're going through that process right now? Well, for us, um, there were several things. One of them was a compelling roadmap and a compelling roadmap map First of all, let me, let me back up just a second. Um, the reason we originally bought good was very simple. We didn't trust the iPhone um, some iOS versions ago. And uh, no offense to Apple, I'm not saying anything about current iOS versions, but that you know, iOS 1, iOS 2, we needed a secure device. We needed a secure enclosure, um, a sandbox, so that we could support the internal demand for iPhones. Um, and good really was the choice. That's how we got involved. And after a period of years, we decided we wanted to take a fresh look at the market, see what the options were. And I, I won't do the, the specific comparisons, but I'll say the things that ended up being most important for us, first of all, device neutrality is really important. And a commitment to device neutrality is important. Um, I do think, like everyone else, there are improvements that can be made about the consistency of the user experience, but however, when you look at the fact that people don't change devices that much, that's, that's a relatively minor point. Once people adjust to an experience, they tend to stay with it. Security is the king of everything. If we don't have confidence in the security, it would be eliminated immediately. And then you look at manageability. So how easy is it to install? What is the probability that the automated installation of a version of a particular software is going to turn into a help desk call? What is the history of, um, of pain or um, lack of pain of smoothness going from version to version? And the reason for that is when you get into our environment and you're, we're serving something like 120,000 users in our, in, for everything in our company and well into the tens of thousands of good users, um, 
you can overwhelm your help desk, your ability to do technical resource, you can over, get overwhelmed very, very quickly if you have something that isn't highly manageable. And ultimately, the thing that made us recommit to good was a combination of um, how we evaluated the manageability, the ability to do installations, the ability to take, it off, take off, the ability to do password resets, the ability to do all the things that are necessary when you have tens of thousands of users who don't read manuals and don't follow rules. Um, no, that never happens. Combined, <laughs> combined frankly, with a, with a compelling roadmap where we saw um, a, where we saw huge, you know, frankly, huge improvement recently to be able to do more um, secondary services, be able to let people get, get access on a virtual basis, not on a persistent basis, to um, more of the resources they have within their environment. Awesome. It was really the combination of those two things. Awesome. And by the way, you know, if you call Christy, the terms are pretty good too. <laughs> so. Was I supposed to say that part? No, it's okay. Uh, anyway. So actually, th that was a big part of the conversation, right? Because the, the, the point of mm -hmm. the call was, was you know, we've, we've you know, I, I thought what was coming was it's not you, it's me, we can still be friends, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's not where we went, right? Where, where, where we went yeah. was, was you, know, I, I've, I've, you know, I've decided this is still the long-term uh, strategic partner for me. Here's where I need, need your help, right? Yep. And we did have a long conversation about kind of commercials, and, and I think we talked earlier, or, or if we didn't, most of you that are good customers know that we have been going through this transition as a company. Uh, from perpetual licensing to subscription licensing. And so it actually has been a big journey and a big part of the conversation. And so I would, I would tweak your statement quite, uh, quite a little bit and say, you know, what's meaningful to those conversations to me and I think to the broader good team is, is actually getting the feedback, right? You know, here's how Absolutely. we want to buy software. Here's how we uh, want to provision users. Here's, here's what works with us and, and, and giving us the opportunity to sort of respond to that. And I think that that was what... Uh, felt great about that set of conversations, Absolutely. and then where we subsequently landed was was sort of how we figure that out. And we've been having a lot of those, so that's been that's fantastic. Good. Well, and frankly, we we um, also, and I think I would say to anybody who has a role similar to mine, it, it is important to understand with your suppliers that that typically they're not changing a license scheme just to upset you or just to get environment. <laughs> it has to do with the realities of how they're funded. It has to do with the realities of how they're. Um, valued, it has to do with the value, th with how their EPS will be perceived depending on how they work with customers and that's something that um, if you try to be open-minded you're able to work to a mutually beneficial conclusion. 